All right, guys, welcome back to part two on home management. This episode is all about meal planning. So I'm really going to zero in and show you how I plan our family meals and share with you again some resources, some free printables. Um, I think everything I have to show you is free um, on this episode. So we will dive right in. I probably don't have to give a whole lot of information about why meal planning is important. I think we've all been in a situation where five o'clock rolls around and we're like, we don't have a plan. We don't know what the kids are going to eat. We don't know what we're going to eat. So we end up cereal for dinner, which I mean, there's a time, there's a season for that. Or a drive through which a lot of times we feel guilty about. I don't always feel guilty about it. I'm going to show you <laughs> our August menu and Chick-fil-A may or may not make a regular appearance here. But nonetheless, we don't probably most of us wouldn't do that every single day. So planning um, is a good thing to do. And I think a lot of people might feel overwhelmed and not know where to start with how to plan a meal. Maybe you've been doing it for years and you're like, that's easy peasy. Um, wherever you are, I hope that something in this could help you. So um, when I plan my meals, I take, I think of it as kind of like a bird's eye approach where I think of like, um, like, zooming out and looking at the most general and then planning more specifically. And I'll show you what I mean by that if that doesn't make sense. But I have three steps for you to meal plan. So hopefully this episode will be a little bit shorter than the last one. Um, step one is to make a list, a master list of all the meals that your family eats regularly. I'm not talking about things that you wish they would eat or things that like you know, we all have aspirations, right? Um, just the things that they actually eat and the meals that you actually cook and rotate through. Maybe it's a dozen, maybe it's 30 meals, maybe you love to cook, you have like an arsenal of like 50 recipes or something. I didn't count mine up, um, but I'm sure I'm somewhere between 12 and 50. Um, so um, the first step, and this is the most time consuming, is you want to make up a master dinner list. And I'll show you mine. I'm going to hold it up here for a minute. Okay, so this is our family's master dinner list currently. And you'll see that I have them categorized. I have Brinner, which is breakfast for dinner. Um, we have crock pot or instant pot meals. We have pasta, Mexican, miscellaneous, soup, sides, and then down at the bottom I have food for the grill and Asian dishes. Okay, so those are the meals that we use and um, it's important to categorize them, but you don't have to do it the way I did. A lot of people might categorize their meals by the kind of protein that it is. So you might put all your beef meals in one column. You might do all your chicken, all your fish, um, all your vegetarians. Like you can organize it however you want, um, but it is helpful for there to be some kind of order because it makes plugging the meals in really simple, which is what I'm about to show you. So this is probably the most time consuming part of meal planning, and but you only have to do it one time besides, you know, taking things out that your kid just decided they don't like anymore, which that happens in my house. I don't like the food that I've been eating for the past four years without complaint, mom. Like, I don't know. Kids are weird. Um, so there's that. Um, but then you can also add to it. Like if you tried a new recipe that everybody loved and all is right with the world, you can add that to your master dinner list as well. Um, but take time to do this. Um, I don't know how long it will take you. It didn't take me too long, but I've had a, a list going for a while. So after you have made your master dinner list and you have um, categorized it, um, you are gonna want to find, this is what I do, um, a free printable calendar. Like I found this one on Pinterest and I'm gonna link this at the bottom. It's just a calendar with blank boxes. I'm gonna move it up a little bit. Okay, and what you do, what I did was take each category and assign it to like a day of the week. So um, August looks a little bit different for us because we're finishing up summer and I wanted to be kind to myself going into the school year. September will probably not have a day for grilling, which has been so lovely because my husband is so good at grilling and I don't have to do anything. Um, and I don't, 
I don't know if we'll do Chick-fil-A once a week. For August, it works. I'm still trying to get myself into the mindset of like homeschooling again, all the things. So this is just a gift to myself. <laughs> um, but anyway, um, you'll you'll choose a category for each day of the week. So like Sundays, we do Brinner, which is breakfast for dinner, which is none of my kids ever complain. We, we'll do whatever. I feel like making French toast, pancakes. I try to do a protein in there, like a sausage or a bacon or an eggs. Um, and everybody's happy and it's easy usually. There's so many like make ahead casseroles you can do. I didn't even put those on my master list, but um, that's what we do Sundays. Mondays, that's when I do like my miscellaneous. I don't even think, I, and I have like an Instant Pot one on there too. So some things are like miscellaneous and Instant Pot, whatever. Um, so you can fill in, you just go through your list, back to this list. So you could go through and say, okay, um, on Mondays, I'm going to pick a Brenner meal. Boop. Brenner meal. Tuesdays, I'm going to do a crock pot. Wednesdays, I'm going to pick a pasta. And so when you're filling in the date, you can just go down the list. Like the first Monday of the month, you can put this. The second Monday of the month, that. The third, fourth, and if there's a fifth, you can just go down. It's like a math equation. You're just plugging things in and solving. Um, so that's how I do that, and that's how I come up with the monthly calendar. Um, and if you didn't even want to do a step three, sorry, it's a little blurry there still. It's going to focus. Oop. There we go. And if you didn't want to do a step three and you feel like this was enough for you for one day, um, you can post this on your refrigerator or wherever you see it. And that can be the extent of your meal planning. Like at the beginning of each week or whenever you grocery shop, you can look at the meals for the week and add what you want for that week to the list. Um, so that's not too hard, right? But it does make life easier. If you do want to take it a step further, I also have the link for this printable that I found on Pinterest. thought it was kind of cute. Um, but it's just the weekly one. So then you would look at what you plan on the calendar for each week and you would put like exactly what you're having, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday for each day, breakfast ideas, lunch ideas, and meal prep. Like if you have to thaw something or chop up vegetables, something like that. Um, so... I hope that made sense about how I think of like the most general, all the meals, and then I put it on a monthly calendar, and then I put it on a weekly calendar. Um, but just be sure that when you are doing your grocery shopping, again, you take a look at the meals for the week, and you take inventory of what you need from your, what you have first in your pantry, in your freezer, in your fridge, and then what you need to get to do those meals. And the thing about this is it's so flexible. I mean, nobody's going to knock on your door and be like, wait, it's Monday. You're supposed to be having chicken pot pie and I see you eating ravioli. Like that's not <laughs> obviously going to happen. So you are the one who gets to choose what to do when. Um, if you want to switch it up, if you forgot to thaw something, it's just a guide. It's just a plan. And that's what homeschooling is, right? <laughs> like things don't always go the way we plan, but it's good to have a plan. Um, but I would just say, if you find yourself constantly like, oh, I don't feel like making that, my kids don't eat it, just take it off of your list and don't count it as one of your master list meals, right? Um, let's see. Oh, the other thing I wanted to say is that um, I use these things called, I think they're called Fodies, Fodies, I don't know. I'll, I'll put a link, but they're like these clear dry erase covers but they also have like a sticky border you can they look like picture frames and um, you can stick them to a refrigerator you can stick them to the wall but you can write over top of them and so that has been nice especially for the weekly one that way I don't have to print like a million of these um, but those have been like a fun thing that I found lately that I that has helped me stay organized because I also put my weekly cleaning routine in one of those so I see it and it's like nice and pretty um, but that's all about the meal planning. The last things I wanted to say were about breakfast and lunch and snacks. Um, I would say it's helpful to have a running list of breakfast ideas and lunch ideas. We love breakfast in our house. I hate making lunch. And then dinner is fine. Like I just usually listen to a podcast or something. Um, but lunch. Lunch, I don't know. Somebody else needs to do uh, an episode all about lunches. I don't know why, like, 
I just don't like making lunches. Um, so it's good to have like a running list. That way you don't have like a lot of decision fatigue and like, I don't know what to do in the middle of the day. Just have a plan. Um, so if anybody has great lunch suggestions, you can go ahead and put that in the comments and I would love to hear what you do. Um, and breakfast again, depends on how independent your kids are, what they can, can they toast a bagel or a waffle or can they get themselves cereal, you know, teach them life skills and uh, lighten your load at the same time, right? Uh, and then snacks. Homeschoolers and snacks. It's a thing. It's a thing. And um, every homeschooling mom I talk to has a struggle. It doesn't matter if your kid is two or if they're 18, but like kids just eat all day long when they're at home. And it makes sense. Like you're walking past the refrigerator in the pantry all day long. Like, why can't I just have a snack? But you know, if they were in traditional school, they would not be eating snacks at 10 o'clock and 10, 15 and 10, 30 and 11 o'clock. So, um, I finally got to the point where I was just so over my kids. Can I have a snack? Can I have a snack? Can I have a snack? And it still happens a lot, but I have found a couple of tips that have helped me, um, help them to help themselves with snacks. And this is what I mean by that. Um, have designated times for snacks. And it doesn't have to be like a time like 10, 15, but it can be like when we do morning time. Um, because at that point, honestly, my kids have already been awake for a couple hours and breakfast is like, that was a while ago because they're early risers. But, or it can be like whenever, I don't know, when we go outside to stretch our legs between subjects, then you can have a snack on the porch or whatever. But if you have a designated time, um, in theory, your kids will not ask you every five minutes for a snack. So that's helpful. Um, the other thing I've done is to have a designated place for snacks. And this has been like a huge game changer. We have a clear bin in our pantry shelves at the kids level um, that's just filled with whatever snacks I'm okay with them having. Like, I think right now I have like granola bars and fruit cups in there, some of those little fruit leather strips, um, pretzels. Um, if we have like the individual bags of chips or something, um, you know, that kind of thing is in there. And I just know like whatever's in there has been approved by me. So it's not, they're not like scanning, looking at the top. The top is where I keep the good stuff, <laughs> the mommy snacks, the mommy treats, the expensive ones that you, you know, kids like will take a bite of something and just, anyway, they're not like looking. They just know the one place that's where they go and they find their snack. And if it's snack time, they don't have to ask me, can I have like, if it's in the bin? Sure. We also have a snack drawer in the fridge that we have sacrificed and it has been lovely because we put the same thing, but, um, sh but things that need to be refrigerated. So string cheeses, like the drinkable yogurts, um, fruit, um, that would last longer in the fridge than it would on the counter. So, um, it's the same thing. And then sometimes if my kids are like, can I have a snack? I'll say, well, you've already had a pantry snack today. Have a fridge snack next because typically the fridge ones are just healthier. And so, you know, I'll just kind of say pantry snack or fridge snack. Um, so that makes things easier too. And again, it, it just eliminates that decision fatigue because I know everything in that drawer is what I put in there. If I don't want my kids to have it, I just won't buy it or I'll hide it from them and eat it when they go to bed. Um, so that's all about, um, planning meals. I hope some of this might have been helpful for you. Um, but again, you can feel free to check the links below and um, get those cute free printable things. Um, and again, I mentioned this on the last, well, part one of this episode, the Lazy Genius Podcast. She has a lot of good episodes about meal planning. Um, I just like her approach to things. She's all about like thinking about what's most important to you and dedicating your time and energy to that. And then things that aren't so important, just be lazy about them, which I think is, is a good way to be. So, um, again, feel free to ask any questions in the comments. Feel free to comment about what your kids love to eat for lunch. Um, and I will see you guys next time.